it is way too hot outside. The current forecast for today, 101 degrees. So let's get inside and show you 10 clever tricks to cool your home down fast. Whew. We're gonna start off pretty simple with tip number 10, and that is to create what's called a cross breeze in your house as soon as it does cool down. Now this isn't always an option, but oftentimes at night, it will get quite a bit cooler, and that's a great time to cool the house down simply by opening a window, turning a fan on, and then doing the same thing somewhere else in the house to pull that air through the house. Tip number nine is to avoid using anything that generates heat within the house, especially during those hot times of the day. Instead of cooking in the oven or on the range, consider using the microwave or using the grill outside. Try to avoid things like the toaster oven or using the iron during those peak times of the day as well. Mm, not bad. If you're a DIYer and want to wear your DIYness proudly on your shirt, hoodie, mug, whatever else you want, be sure to check out our link to our store in our description below. Tip number eight is to get rid of these incandescent bulbs in your house because they are basically heat lamps. Check out the temperature using this thermal camera here on what these bulbs can get up to. This is kind of insane. Look at this one, it's 404. And just a minute ago we tested this and it was actually at 420. I mean, these are insanely hot. So these are really heating up the room when you're using these incandescent bulbs like this. The solution to this is to replace these with LED bulbs like this one. Here we've replaced this with an LED bulb and this is a 60 watt equivalent so it's not even a high wattage one and if you look at the screen here we're basically right around 129 to 130 degrees at the warmest. So this is significantly cooler than the incandescents. Tip number seven is to make sure that your ceiling fan is moving in the right direction. Ceiling fans typically have a switch to help it move in one direction or the other. In the summer, when it's warmer, you wanna make sure that the fans are spinning counterclockwise and they'll be pushing the air down, which gives you a little breeze and helps you feel cooler. In the winter, you want the opposite. You actually want it to pull that cold air up and so make sure it's moving in the clockwise direction. Now, if you happen to move into a house, for example, where someone has changed that setting and didn't change it at the right season, then you may be stuck with a situation where it's pulling air up when you want it to push air down. So just be sure to check that yourself and make sure you have your fan in the right setting. Trick number six is to use a dehumidifier. Now the humidity in the air, depending on the temperature, can exaggerate things and make it feel a little bit hotter or a little bit colder than it actually is. Think about going outside when it's really humid, but it's also cold. It's biting and it's stinging and it kind of exaggerates that cold and makes it worse. Same thing on the other side, when it's really hot and humid, it's muggy and it's swampy and it just makes it feel even more gross. So by nature, the central air conditioning systems in our homes will dehumidify and those can do a great job at helping, but a separate dehumidifier unit can take that even further and make it feel like the temperature that it is and not make it feel worse. For tip number five, if things get extremely desperate and it's just the hottest night ever, it doesn't hurt if you take a bowl, some ice, put it in front of a fan, turn that fan on. Tip number four is to block off any windows, especially those that are in direct sunlight. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, all of the sun is coming in on the south side of our house. And so we wanna make sure to block that off. So you can use anything you need to. In some cases, I've seen people use tin foil to block it off. If you do have blinds, curtains, or shutters, use those and close it off, especially at those hottest parts of the day. Doing so will trap a lot of that heat outside and keep it from getting in, and then your room will stay significantly cooler. Obviously, you don't have to do this all the time, but on those super hot days, it might really help to keep the house cooler by closing off the light from those windows. Tip number three is to consolidate what parts of the house you're cooling. If you happen to live in a home where you spend a lot of your time in certain areas, but maybe not so much in others and other family members don't either, then it may make sense to try to focus all of your cooling efforts to those areas. For example, if you've got a guest bedroom that's not really being used, it's probably a good idea to close that door, close the register in that room or the air vent, and then cover those windows with the blinds, curtains, or shutters that we talked about earlier. That room may get a little warmer, but that will also help redirect your central air conditioning system's power and force into the areas that are used the most. On that same note, if you have more than one floor in your house, consider changing which vents or air registers are open during which season. So for example, we live in a Rambler where we have a single story here, a basement underneath. 
In the winter, we want to make sure that those registers downstairs are open so that warm air is blowing down there because it tends to stay cooler naturally downstairs. We close them upstairs and then we reverse that usually in the spring so that when summer comes, then the downstairs is naturally pretty cool and up here we're focusing a lot of that energy for that air up here where we need it most. Tip number two is to take care of the condenser on your air conditioning unit if you have one. This outside condenser unit is responsible for keeping your house cool and is kind of the heart and soul of your air conditioning system. I've got an HVAC coil cleaner right here and this stuff is specifically meant to do this job. These don't cost very much. I'll put links to these in the description below. You can also blow it out with a hose and just make sure you're trying to get all the big stuff out. So on that note, before we start with anything, we want to first get everything away from it. So I've removed any weeds any debris that was around here. Even this is starting to encroach on it and so I want to make sure there's plenty of airflow around here. So I might need to trim these bushes back to make sure that that's not an issue. Now that we've got everything cleaned off around the condenser, I've turned off the air conditioning inside at the thermostat and then I'm going to use the AC disconnect here and just pull this out. And that means there's no connection from the power from the incoming to the outgoing to the condenser, and this cannot turn on. With the power completely off, we can now take off the fan part, and don't worry, we're not gonna be disassembling anything other than just lifting this off so we can access the inside. And the only reason we wanna take this fan off is so that we can clean it out from the inside out. We don't wanna blow everything into the middle here, we wanna blow it out and away. All right, now we're gonna take our HVAC coil cleaner, we're going to spray it liberally along the inside here. Then we're going to let it foam up for five to ten minutes. And when we're done, it should be good and foamy like that. Now that we've let it do its thing, let's clean it off on the inside here with the hose. See all that grime coming out? That's what we want. Get it all clean. So right now I'm spraying it right toward myself. And it's not getting anything because it captures all that water. Get this all out. Now that we've done the inside, I'm going to shoot the outside as well. Now fortunately, our unit is actually in pretty decent shape, nothing too bad. But if yours is worse, they do sell these brushes here that you can use to try to get in between and kind of clean out everything on the inside there. Especially useful on this inside section. And then they also sell a little foil or grill straightener here that you can use. And that's if you've got a bunch that are messed up, then you can actually use this to straighten them out and make sure that everything gets back so they're open. And they're essentially like pores that the air needs to come in and out of. So make sure that uh, all of those are in working shape and you don't have a bunch that are flattened or smushed. If you do, get one of these. And with that, we're ready to put the fan back on. All right, keep us cold, baby. Now that this is all cleaned out, this is like a night and day difference. Now for my number one trick on how to cool your house faster, and that is to use the right type of filter for your HVAC system. So on my HVAC system, the AC is running right now, so I'm just gonna hop in and turn that off. And then once that shuts down, I'll use the switch over here on the side to switch it off. If you don't have a switch like that, then you can use the circuit breaker. You want to make sure your power is off while you switch out your filters. In fact, if you have any questions on that, I've got a video that you can check out right up here that has everything you need to know about how to properly switch out your furnace and HVAC filter. So the difference is, if you're using a filter that's maybe one of the higher filtration levels, uh, this one is just a four, okay? So the, basically the higher level it is on the FPR or the MERV ratings, either one, the higher level it is, the less air it's gonna let through. And it makes your HVAC system and your air conditioning unit work harder and lets less air flow, cooling down your house slower. So if you can do something that has a lower rating like this, you see these pleats on here are really wide. That's a good thing in the case of airflow. Even better than that is one of these, these Flanders Easy Flow uh, filters. These are way simpler. Now these don't work for everybody. Sometimes you might have uh, severe reactions with allergies or dust or things like that. For most people this is going to be okay, especially if you're just using it for a couple of months, maybe the hottest months of the year. But if this doesn't work for you, then maybe stick with the ones that do. Now with this, lots of air can get through here. This is just a fiberglass mesh here and it makes it so that your air conditioning can push as much air as it wants to through there and it does a great job. They're also the least expensive by far that you can get. The downside is you have to keep an eye on them. 
Okay, there goes the AC. So I'm gonna switch this off now. There we go. The downside is that you do have to keep an eye on them and change them more regularly. But because they're so cheap, I think you'll find that it's actually not a big deal. I change mine once a month, every month. The first Sunday of every month, I come down here, swap it out. I actually don't care if it's not in that bad of shape. I'll just swap it out anyway so I don't have to forget. And then these things cost so little, especially compared to these more expensive ones, and they let so much air through. Now, if you're curious about cost on these, these are so inexpensive. In fact, you can buy these online in 12 packs and 24 packs, which will save you a ton. I'll put links in the description below where you can buy them on Amazon, have them delivered to your house, and you're all set. Another option is they are even less expensive if you buy them at Home Depot. You can even have them shipped to your house, and they are actually just $1.50 a piece. So there's these four packs that you can get them in, and you can get even more. I priced it out and you would pay about $58 to have three years worth of these delivered to your house. So it doesn't get much cheaper than that and the airflow on these is fantastic. Like I say, just change them once a month. If you're living in an area where you have a lot of pets or you have a lot of construction around you and dirt and that kind of thing, maybe change them every couple of weeks if you need to. But even then, at $1.50, it's still a bargain. I hope you found these tips helpful. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.